Now you're ready to begin the paper mache part of this process. Go ahead and mix up your paste 24 hours in advance. Check the handout because there are specific instructions for the paste. All right, so my mass clay sculpt is complete. I went ahead and added some more wrinkles up here to the top, so that was activated a little bit more. Um, I don't have anything over here, but I can use some paint to activate that area. I did, however, put in the snakes at the bottom just to help me when I'm doing my paper mache to let me know where the edges are. So um, make sure, I think it's just helpful um, to do that just so you have a guide of where to stop. Um, and again, make sure your mouth isn't covered. That's really important. And we're ready to go. So I went ahead and mixed up the paper mache. Um, it is a lot. I recommend doing is taking some of your paper that came in the box, hopefully you didn't throw it away, um, and rip off all the straight edges. And this will help just as we're blending the pieces together so you won't see that seam. Um, if you did accidentally throw this paper away, um, shopping bags will work. Um, I know in a lot of my online shipments I've been getting kind of a brown paper. You want it to be like thicker than notebook paper, um, but not too thick because you're going to want to be able to manipulate it. So um, I like to start with strips. Um, and there's really no right or wrong way. Some people like to work with smaller strips. Some people like bigger strips. Um, the first step is you want to coat your paper. And I think I'm going to go even smaller. So I'm going to rip that just a little bit. And just make sure that your whole paper is coated with the paper mache mixture. And then we're going to start wrapping it around the nose. I like to start with the nose. I find that's the easiest part. And then I'm just going to smooth it down. And move it around and just overlap pieces. That'll help make it stronger if they're overlapped. And you'll notice too, as you start going, I'm having those torn edges really, really help to um, make sure there aren't edges. I'm gonna flip my light up here. So there's, there's a few tips and tricks um, that you can use when you're doing the paper. You can always tear the paper, so don't be afraid to tear the paper to get it to fit to a form. Um, also, I put down a piece of paper underneath because this can get really messy. So for the tip of the nose, I just I have a piece here, kind of a square shape, I guess. Um, and then I'm going to tear it in the middle to get it to fit around the, this tip of the nose. Um, and you can overlap the paper mache on top of itself. You just have to make sure that wherever the paper is touching, that, I rip some of this off here, that you have to have the paper mache glue stuff on there as well. So if it's just plain paper touching plain paper, it's not gonna wanna stick. That's pretty good. I am gonna cover the mask with two layers. And anywhere, if you see like a wrinkle and you don't like that wrinkle, it might be hard to see from my camera here, but if you have a wrinkle, what I like to do is I'll tear the paper and then smooth it down and you can fold it on top of itself. And that'll help get rid of your wrinkles. So go easy. If you don't like the way it, way it, it looks, just rip it off, um, start again. And so the nice thing about having this clay is a different color, um, hopefully, then you can sort of see where you've put the brown paper down. And even little scraps like this. So if you have a thin area, you can just layer that right on top. So I like to start with the nose, work my way down. I'm gonna cover just this back edge here really quick and see I just ripped it with my fingers you know no it is messy very very messy 
Like I said, anywhere where it's kind of wrinkling or you don't like how, how it looks, like am I getting a gap underneath here? So I'm just gonna rip it. Rip and fold. One thing you might wanna do, especially if you have a really skinny nose, is leave a gap. So I'm gonna flip this, this nose over so you can see a little better. So you might wanna leave a gap underneath here. I'll, I'll keep moving and when we get to the end, I'll show you what that might look like. And that'll just help because when we pull this off, we'll wanna dig as much of the clay out as possible to make our mask really nice and light. And the lighter your mask is, um, the easier it'll be to wear. All right, so let me show you really quick the eyes. I have really barely used any of that paper mache paste. There's gonna be a lot. Um, so the eyes, how do we do the eyes? Um, the easiest way for me is I like this is where it is okay to have a, a straight edge, or I even like to use a folded edge. Um, I think it's easier in the eye area since it is so skinny. I'm just taking that extra paper mache from on, that was on my fingers and just moving it around. I'm gonna fold it in half here. And then, so as long as you know where you want your eye opening to start, that is where you can lay it right here, right inside the eye. You wanna make sure that you do not cover the eye. Very important. You want to be able to see. And this is the tricky part. So now we're getting into like these really tiny shapes. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it down with one finger and kind of shove the paper in to these little cracks, these little areas. I'm using my finger. You could use a tool, you could use a spoon. I have a little bit of a fingernail, so I'm using that. I'm just kind of rubbing it down in to where it needs to go. And so, especially in any areas like this, where they get really small, this is where, again, I'm gonna fold that edge, put it right up to where my eye opening needs to be, and then fold it down here. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna worry about just the eye opening first. So I'm gonna go all the way around and then I can fill out the rest of it. And you'll wanna do the same thing too for the edge of your mask. So let's take a strip. Get a whole bunch of paper mache on it. Um, I have so much on my hands right now that I don't have to dip it, but when you dip it, make sure you dip it in and you squeegee with your fingers all the excess off for as much as you can. Fold so you have a nice straight edge. And then this is where you would just put it right up against the edge of the mask form so we know where the edge of the mask is. The nice thing about this paper mache is it sticks really well. And it is gluten free. So if you have any allergies, we'll all be safe. And so there it goes, just like that. So I'm speeding this up here because it took me a little while. Um, and uh, But I still wanted you all to see kind of the process of getting the first layer on, um, making sure everything's covered with the paper, everything's overlapped the best that you can tell, um, especially where the clay is. That part's really easy to see. And then once this is done, you can start working on your second layer. So now I've got the entire mess covered with the brown paper. And now I'm going back and applying a second layer. I'm noticing that some of my edges are either sticking up, they're kind of bumping, um, or it's just they don't want to stick. So I'm finding that if I take... Uh, my paper and kind of tear it to the side that it's getting thinner. It's probably hard to tell right here. 
Um, but here you can tell on this piece. So here where I've torn it and it's kind of down to more one ply, I'm using some of this to cover some areas that are lifting up. Um, also to strengthen parts of the mask, especially the nose is gonna be extremely fragile. So I for sure wanna try and put another layer of this thinner paper on there. Um, and just using a little bit of, of paste. And then I'm also trying to use, now that I know that it's all covered, I'm trying to use bigger pieces of paper too, as much as I can. And then again, wherever, it, if it starts to wrinkle or act funny and you don't like the way it looks, just rip it and then lay it down on top of each other. Um, I think I'm also gonna go over all the edges a little bit with some longer pieces here to help hide all the tiny, like, marks that I have from the littler pieces I used. And then once I pull it apart, after everything dries, I'll know whether or not I need to go over those edges a third time. So, and any place you can see, like right here, it's kind of dark. So that means I'm seeing some of the clay. Um, I definitely need to put another piece over there. And any, any place that you think there might not be a second layer, um, go ahead and add another piece or just to smooth it out. Like right here on this cheek, it kind of there's an indentation it goes in so I'm going to put another layer over that just to kind of help smooth it out a little bit all right I found that when I got towards the end of putting my paper mache on my mask there were some really bumpy areas especially when I used really small pieces and they overlapped and I wanted to get rid of that look I want to try and make it look as smooth as possible so in order to do that I found that if I tore the paper um, to where it was thinner that really helped. It might be hard to see, but kind of like you can see on this edge right here, if I hold it up to the light, it's almost translucent. So having that thinner paper and then putting that over where all the bumps are, especially where you can see the edges or the or the sides of the pieces, that really helps. So in order to do that, it's a little tricky um, to separate this paper. Um, so sometimes you have to tear it the short way and sometimes you have to tear it the long way. I'm finding with these sheets that I have right now, the longer way is working. Let's see if I can get it to tear. I'm trying to get a bigger sheet, and of course it's not working. So let me try it the other way. Let me try it this way, the short way. Sometimes it helps just by going slow and pulling paper not going very great but I'm looking for pieces kind of like this top section um, in larger areas of it it just depends on you know, how well the paper is pressed together there I'm getting a little bit there now not a ton but just this kind of thinner paper. If I can get some pieces that are a little bit wider, it'll be easier to go over, like especially like on these eyebrow ridges. Um, these have already gone over, but they'll, it just looks really bumpy. So I'm gonna try and tear, now that I've got this torn, I know that it's tearing better in this direction. So I'm gonna start, again, going really slow. I don't know why, but I've just found that that helps. Maybe that just helps control it and separate the layers a little bit more. There we go. And so you can see I'm taking the two pieces and I'm pulling them away from each other. There we go. So just try the different directions in there. That's some nice, kind of hold it up to the light there. You can see that thinner part. So then I could tear this into a shape, dip it in the paper mache, and then really start to smooth it out on the areas that I want more smooth. Now I'm applying the second layer, starting with the nose, working my way back down. Pretty much once that first layer is done, you can start doing your second layer because um, that tip of the nose will be dry. And this is where it gets harder because you can't really see as well where the first layer is. So you just kind of have to hope you do a good job. And then you're done. So I have my entire Comedia mask, paper mache 
Um, now I'm gonna take the paper mache paste with a paintbrush and paint over the entire surface of the mask. And that'll help firm it up and harden. Um, one thing you wanna do also, if you're gonna use one of your paint brushes to do this, is to make sure when you're done that you wash the paintbrush really, really well. Cause that paste has glue and it will harden your brush and you won't be able to use it. So I've painted a layer of the paper mache paste over the top of my mask and you can see here it's shiny. It shouldn't drip, like there shouldn't be giant gobs of it, but just enough so that way it looks wet and shiny and let this dry. Uh, make sure it's dry all the way before the next step. So probably like, you know, it depends on the humidity and, and how thick it is. Um, but at least 12 hours, check it, see how dry it is, um, maybe a full day and then we're on to the next step.